Hi there, hello, how's it going? So I was planning on doing a Q&A session when we hit 10K, but uh, 10K came and went before I was able to film this video. So now we're at 12K, so thank you guys so much. Um, I could not do this without you, so I really wanna say thank you. And I have tons of questions that you guys submitted for me to answer. A lot of them are about my art practice, my goals, and how to make money and start your own business as an artist. So I will leave some timestamps down below and I will categorize the questions basically and we'll talk about the really specific business questions first. The first question that we have is from Mackie Deebs. Uh, I just wanna apologize in advance if I see your username incorrectly, but Mackie asks, how long did you know that you wanted to be an artist for? Did you have failed attempts at a career as an artist or is this your first attempt? Where do you come up with all your strategy? I'm so impressed with the channel and your determination. To answer your question about whether this is my first time trying to make a career as an artist, the answer to that is no, this is not my first time. Uh, before I did art YouTube and like all of this stuff, I actually was an abstract acrylic pouring artist. I did lots of stuff like that. I'll put some pictures of my work to the side over here. And I was interested in getting my work into galleries and sort of the traditional like art career, art industry kind of approach where you submit to shows and galleries and you get like an agent. I did succeed in some part in getting my work into coffee shops and galleries, but I wasn't actually selling nearly as much as I wanted to. And so I had to kind of innovate a little bit. Um, so I gave up on that. A lot of people that I was working with really wanted me to like make bigger pieces, but I was in college at the time and I just didn't have the space for that. So I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And so I had to switch strategies. So I put art on the back burner for a little bit while I focused on my college courses. And then when the pandemic hit, I started this YouTube channel and everything's sort of been going on from here and I've since kind of abandoned acrylic pouring. I did try the traditional art approach and I found that it just wasn't for me and so I've switched to this and I find growing on YouTube to be the most approachable, most satisfying, most fulfilling form of social media and growing my audience that I've ever experienced before. So that is kind of, um, that's that. As for where I get my strategy from, a lot of that is just like, <laughs> an obsessive amount of watching people's YouTube videos. Like I w like to watch um, Catherine Manning, for example, her videos on YouTube strategy are really, really great. And there's a lot of golden nuggets in there. And I've also just tried a lot of things. If you look at my early content, even from the beginning of 2021, I was not very good at filming, at editing, at presenting myself on camera, at being confident, at like sort of talking effectively and I think I've definitely improved at that the more that I've done it and I really think that it just takes some practice. Um, I was not charismatic and I never thought of myself as like a video person but I sort of you know threw myself into this and it's been like my hyper fixation <laughs> ever since I started. I have been obsessed with the idea of growth and there is still a lot that I want to improve on. Mackenzie Cavalston asks how do you deal with turning down opportunities that don't align with your own vision? That's a great question. I get approached for projects that seem really fun, but I know they won't take me closer to the direction I want my business to go. Like someone wanting graphic design, but I'm trying to grow my oil painting side of things. I don't want to spend time on projects that aren't related to my growth plan, but it's so hard to say no to opportunity, especially since I'm just starting out. Do you have any tips? Yeah, so I was actually in your shoes um, just a couple of months ago in December. So I used to be, I used to really love web design. I still do like it, but I used to sort of take courses on that. And I was trying to market myself as a web designer on the side while I was still in school. And I got approached for a project in December that paid really well. And I knew that I didn't want to do web design like full time. I wasn't really interested in taking on lots of freelance work. I had like, you know, my YouTube channel was growing a lot in December. It's still growing a lot. It's growing very quickly. Um, and I knew that wasn't aligned with my goals, but it paid enough that it made it worth my time. So when you get approached for opportunities that aren't really in line with your vision, I would say that like say no, but with a price basically is my suggestion. So like, 
um, a good way to like say no to a brand deal or to say no to an opportunity is to be like, my price for this would be X and then just price it higher than, you know, than you would normally, but at a price that if they said yes, you would take it because it would be worth your time, even if you didn't really enjoy the work and even if it wasn't really aligned with your goals. So yeah, that's how I would basically approach it. Um, that way, if they are interested, if it does mean that much to them that like, you know, they're willing to pay that price, then do it. <laughs> it's a great way to make money. I mean, if you look at my, um, if you look at my December income video, I talked about how that was my biggest income stream, that web design project for December, and it made a huge difference in my life getting that money at that time. Um, and that like, you know, it had a big impact. So I would say that, you know, say no, but with a price and you will get less opportunities that you don't want, but the ones that you do get that you don't want will pay you much more. Um, and that's sort of how I would do that. Calm the front door, that's a great username, says, you mentioned making sure to save 30% of income for taxes, but do you have any tips or knowledge to share about tax season and correctly reporting various streams of income? A great question. As someone who is self-employed, I do save about 30% of my income for taxes, which is a lot, but you have to consider that in the US, typically employers would deduct taxes for you, things like social security and Medicare, and that because your employer is not doing that because you're self-employed, you have to take that out yourself at the end of the year or pay quarterly estimated taxes. You don't have to report various streams of income. If you are self-employed, that is like your business, you have a sole proprietorship, what it's called in the US and that is like the default and you just report business revenue. You also want to keep track of your um, deductions, your expenses, because you can deduct those from your taxes, not the whole price, typically a percentage based on like what it is that you did it for, like software or supplies, etc. So I use Wingspan to keep track of all of my business income and my expenses and then I also have a business checking account through Bluevine, which is a free business checking account for small business owners and freelancers. And with that bank account, they actually have this thing called a sub account. You can have two of those. I have a sub account, which has its own routing number and account number. And I put my money for taxes in there. So it is like separated from the rest of my money so that I can very clearly like, you know, have a pool of money that I have saved for taxes. Now we're gonna transition into talking about some more general questions about making money as an artist that aren't really specific to me, more sort of general questions about how to make money as an artist and how to start a business. Kai Castle GG asks, how can you do it without a big audience or a follower count? Like as someone who's just an ordinary person and not looking to be a content creator. That's a great question. I would say that you're probably going to want to do more in-person types of marketing, more like local things. So if you don't want to have a robust social media presence, you're going to want to get your artwork in maybe like galleries, cafes, restaurants, boutiques. You might want to get a booth at an art fair, for example. There are probably lots of art fairs in your area, typically in the summer. When I lived in the Twin Cities, there was a whole art fair season that stretched from spring to fall. And the booths, there was like a price to get a booth at those art fairs. But if you're confident enough that you can make that money back, it can be a huge income stream. And there are some professional artists that will travel cross country with their work to sell at art fairs. And they make an enormous amount of money and they get people on their email list and they have like collectors and they get commissions. And that's a good way to market in person because your art is right there. Do some Googling, um, look some stuff up, try to find artists that fit the career mold that you wanna enter into, that you are passionate about. And maybe like email them or DM them, ask them for advice. Like be like, hey, like how did you get started? What tips would you have for me? And go from there um, because you can really kind of piecemeal your way to a full-time career. And there is no clear cut like ladder for success. You have to kind of make it on your own. Manga Gnome asks, can you make money with only a website? Like if you have your art on just a website, will people find it? Will they purchase it? Um, I would say that you still need to drive traffic to the website. You're still going to need to have some kind of vehicle that will generate traffic for you that will sort of get people to your website. 
and a blog could work for this, Pinterest marketing could work for this, um, an Instagram, a YouTube channel, but you're going to need some kind of vehicle for marketing. But again, you could do the in-person route of doing art fairs and art licensing and stuff like that that isn't contingent on that social media following. But in my experience, if you just put your art on a website and don't market it at all, it will not sell. Jason Miller asks, how do you work out what to charge for a piece? There are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can go by an hourly rate. Um, you can factor in the cost of materials. I like to do like a price by area. So I multiply the length and width of a piece and then multiply that by a certain number, like maybe 2.5. And then that comes up with a price. And then that typically um, I will adjust a little bit either up or down depending on what other artists are charging, what I feel like is fair, what accounts for my shipping and packaging materials, uh, what accounts for my labor. And once you have all of that stuff figured out, that is the price that you want to go with. Okay, so Anna Dreams Art has a really great question. Her question is, what are some phrases to say to people who try to talk you down in price? I tend to be commissioned most of the people I know. So I get a lot of 40 bucks. I don't have 40 bucks, no matter what they agreed to before the work. Or like the exchange rate is really high right now and $20 in American is so much. Or, but we're family, my birthday is coming up. I'm too nice and wimpy, so I usually just end up saying it Merry Christmas six months early and vowing to never do another commission. Yeah, I've experienced what you're uh, what you're going through. I totally get it. My advice would probably be to just like be firm in your price. Be like, hey, like I have to cover my costs. This piece took me this amount of hours to do. I had to purchase materials for this piece. It took a really long time. I, you know, spent a lot of time and effort to make sure that it was exactly what you wanted. And you agreed to this price when we started out and it's dishonest and unfair of you to change that now once the work is done uh and just like push back a little bit and if you find that your family and friends consistently do this then yeah just don't don't take commissions from them um and just find other people and either take like half up front and half at the end or all of it up front if you find that they're skirting you of your fee at the end. So yeah, definitely charge half up front at the very least. Also, um, 20 bucks and 40 bucks are really cheap for commissions. You should definitely be charging more of your actual rates. That's just, just my advice. Maritime Bujo asks, any tips for becoming an affiliate and or finding sponsorships? Should you wait to be approached or approach them first? So ever since I hit 10K, I have been getting a significant increase in sponsorship offers and deals from brands. Um, I would say that like, if you wait long enough, the brands that you want will contact you, but you can go out and find them. The way that you do that, by the way, is by stalking them on LinkedIn. So you're gonna wanna look for like their marketing director, their sponsorship partner, their sponsorship director, like their, um, social media or press person, find their emails. There are some services online that will like comb certain uh, websites for emails associated with it. And then if you can find their email, like typically it's something along the lines of like first name dot last name at brand.com and just like sending them a cold email. I will um, put like a screen grab of an email that I typically send when I'm reaching out to brands right now uh, so pause this video and take a look at that. But that is like kind of the email that I send. I'm typically like, hi, my name's Kelsey. I am a visual artist and a content creator. My content is around this. I'm reaching out because I think that my audience would really resonate with your brand or your product or your message. And sort of here are some stats about me. Here's why I feel like we'd be good. We would be a good fit together. Um, let me know if you're interested and I can send you my, you know, my media kit, my rates, etc. Importantly, do not have attachments to your email. So if you have like a PDF or an image, don't put that in the email. That will get your email put in the spam folder pretty fast. So just have a hyperlink to your socials in the body of the email and that's it. That's all you want to do. When it comes to being an affiliate, a lot of websites or brands will like have a very clear cut process to becoming an affiliate and that's 
pretty obvious um, if they don't have that just send them an email to their customer support and see if they get back to you like I had um, a couple of instances where I reached out directly to somebody who like was a one person like one man show behind a product and I was like hey like do you have an affiliate program if so I would love to join and those smaller businesses tend to offer very competitive very like great affiliate marketing rates. AMCV Art asks, how are your videos always so aesthetic? Thank you. Um, I think a huge part of that is just, uh, I've got brand colors. I've got like a personal aesthetic that's very developed, like, you know, the chair, like the warm reds, the warm yellows and oranges. I have lots of plants in my apartment. My apartment has really good lighting. Um, yeah, I think that has really made the biggest difference but also I use a lot of shot variety in my videos. So I like to record things from various different angles. I like to get a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close-up shot sometimes to add a little bit of visual interest. And yeah, I just sort of experiment with it. I have fun. Um, back in the beginning of 2021, when I was first sort of practicing with this camera, my Canon M50, I didn't know what I was doing and also it was winter in Alaska at the time. I was living in Alaska at that at that time and um, it was winter so it was super super dark. There was like no light basically and that was a huge struggle so I had a very limited time of the day that I could actually effectively record in with good lighting. So I think good lighting it makes all the difference <laughs> like really genuinely it makes such a huge impact on your videos and the quality of it and how it like looks to people so definitely make sure that you have lighting nailed spilled milk asks not necessarily money related or art related but how do you record with a camera slash phone is it worth investing in a camera etc for youtube instead of using an iphone yes i would say that it is definitely worth it to invest in a real camera my Canon M50, I got it for a little over $300 used, uh, and it was worth it. Like, hands down, absolutely worth it. Yes, this was definitely worth it. If you are trying to think about whether to buy the latest iPhone or to buy a camera, I would say to buy a camera. Um, not only will the Canon M50 and the Ket lens and the mic be cheaper, but your videos will be better. So I found it very difficult and unwieldy and inconvenient to film my videos on my phone. And if you scroll back to the beginning of my channel, before January of 2021, all of those videos were filmed on my phone and the quality of them is terrible. I would say that I probably, I could do better now knowing what I know. And if you have to film on your phone, I would recommend that you know, you practice setting up your shot, you make sure that you're sort of framed correctly and you film with the camera on the back of your phone instead of the front, that will be a better quality. And then also Moment has some really great gear for filmmakers that just use their iPhones or their mobile devices. And that is sort of the best resource that I have for filming on mobile, if you have to. But again, I strongly recommend that you film most of your content with a real camera because it will make an absolutely huge difference. Now we have some more personal art related questions. Theo asks, when did you start painting with oils? I started painting with oils my sophomore year of college. Sarah asks, what are some non-visual related things that influence your art? Like music, movies, etc. things in your personal life? Yeah, so, okay. I have a really advanced answer to this question actually. So, um, when I was in college, in a couple of my philosophy courses, we read the Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula K. Le Guin, which if you haven't read it, I would really recommend that you read it. It describes um, this utopia and this perfect life, but the, um, the existence of the utopia, the only reason that it, can, that it can continue is because a small child is going through unending suffering. And in the story, people of the town believe that this child's suffering is required for everyone else in Omalas, this very large city, to have the perfect life, and it is the perfect life. In this, uh, in this short story, or Ursula K. Le Guin describes Omalas, describes child suffering, and how, like, whenever someone comes of age in Omalas, they are taken to see the child, and either they accept that the child has to suffer for them to have this perfect life, 
or they reject that premise and they leave to go into like you know the outside world which presumably is like worse for whatever reason and in the beginning of this short story Ursula K. Le Guin talks about how we only find evil and pain interesting we think happiness and beauty is boring sometimes the trouble is that we have a bad habit encouraged by pedants and sophisticates of considering happiness as something rather stupid only pain is intellectual only evil interesting this is the treason of the artist a refusal to admit the banality of evil and the terrible boredom of pain the interpretation that you might take reading this story is that the suffering of the child is actually completely unnecessary, but the people of Omelas are unable to conceive, like our brains are unable to conceive of like a utopia, like an actual utopia. There has to be a catch. There has to be something wrong with Omelas. And so that that quote that i just read to you that really inspires my work i'm not interested in painting suffering or pain i want to paint things that are beautiful because i genuinely think that that's what makes me happy and i think that like that's what art can be and that is fine that is that is interesting too and i'm trying to reject the idea that she presents in that quote that critique of us and so um i paint stuff that makes me happy like i paint pretty pictures <laughs> and because of the background that i have the life that i lived before this um the trauma that i've endured i think that like that is a rejection of that like i don't want to paint my like you know my tragic backstory <laughs> per se you know what i mean like i'm just not interested in that i don't want to relive that i don't want to force myself to endure that kind of suffering and reliving that constantly and i want to paint pretty landscapes and cute butterflies and adorable little frog creatures and like that to me is what makes me happy and that's what i think is just that's what i want my art to be so meditational classic has three random questions what is my ultimate goal as an artist and a person um to be happy and to not have to worry about money i grew up and I still do think about money constantly. Like I have had panic attacks about the number in my bank account. I check my balance whenever I make any significant purchase. I want to be able to like go to the store and buy groceries and not have to look at the prices. Like I want that life. I want to be able to like go on vacations sometimes to nice places and I I want to be able to enjoy my life and I don't want to be able, I don't want to have to worry about money all the time. Um, and that's just been like a thing that I've done all my life and I, my eventual goal as a person and as an artist did not have to do that. So yeah. Um, second question that they have is what's one thing you would love to do with your life? Um, I think to travel a little bit more. I would also love to inspire you guys. Like the comments that I get or the DMs and emails that I get talking about how I've changed your life, talking about how I've inspired you to fulfill or like pursue your dreams, that to me is so impactful. That makes my day when people send me that stuff. And if I can save one person's life, if I can make one of you guys like pursue your dreams and do things and do something that makes you happy, like that to me is is huge. Um I would also really love to be able to donate more to really effective charitable causes like give well um i want to be in a position where i can give some portion of my salary to the against malaria foundation because malaria has killed more humans in existence than anything else over the course of history um and it's one of those really big things and i also want to um volunteer more for political causes and be able to sort of do phone banking and write letters and stuff to voters during during voting season and during sort of the political um eras like midterms in the general election and that would um that would be good i would like to do that carter radcliffe asks what are some online resources that you like to have that you like that have taught you more about how to make art specific youtube channels skillshare classes websites etc 
hmm, New Masters Online Academy, like New Masters Art Academy has been an online resource that I've really enjoyed. They're like an online art school. Um, it's like a very um, traditional realist form of Skillshare where every class is very in depth. It's much longer than a typical Skillshare class, like measured in like hours instead of like 45 minutes. Um, yeah, I would say that's been a, a huge resource. Juliet Aristides has some really good art books that I recommend um, and James Gurney, of course. All right, now we have some random questions to end us off, and this was a long one. Thank you guys for sticking with me. 123 Rock Fan asks, cats or dogs or both? Dogs are okay, but I, you know, cats, like obviously cats. Spooky is um, at my feet right now, sleeping, and it's really cute. Copper Coin Stories asks, have you been staying hydrated today? Yes, I have, thank you, but uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> Answering those questions, requires um a lot of talking so yeah that was the q a session if you guys got a lot out of this um if you have any more questions for me let me know down in the comments um if i did not answer your question it was either true that i didn't have the answer for it or that i want to make a dedicated video on the topic so uh yeah that's that if you guys have any if you guys have any recommendations for videos that you want to see from me in the future, let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.